apples, cycle pears, first red plum tree this end of Kentucky. Look at it now. Can old Trader Beasley really help us? I mean, the squirrels eating all our crops this way. Well, he better taking the same money from a lone, lorn woman he takes from the rest of you. But if he succeeds, Mrs. Charles. Hmm. Well, it's been my experience that he usually does. Most times by some outrageous means. Well, what in the blue blazes is that catawalk? Well, that's a Papagano spirit song. Heathen spirits in the presence of our children? You know what must be done. We visit every house. Take positions and I will start the sacred hymn. Ooh. Brother Bingham says he wishes him with that imaginary bear here. Well, Bingham, uh, Mr. Dobb is that bear that got wrote up in the good book for eating the boys oh. that bothered the prophet Elisha. Oh. Mr. Dobb doesn't take too kindly of being referred to as an imaginary bear. Oh, I think we do better in the eyes of the Lord to suffer in humility than to accept the aid of a heathen. And you would if you could see my sergeant patch. Well, it do seem that when the Almighty sends a plague, he ought to arrange somehow to get us shut of it. Uh, you Hines boys ain't got a piece of property worth the Almighty to plague. Well, no, ma'am, but uh, you never know where lightning will strike. Huh! Hey! <laughs> Little one of the brown squirrel clan, you have built your home in the orchard. You must find new home. Do you know what he is up to, then? I think I do. We visit every house. Bang of the bobcat clan, bang in the darkness, uh, is coming to your home. You must flee. You must be be born, squirrel. Be born. Oh. <laughs> Listen, you old fraud. If you think I'm going to pay out good money for a show like that, you sir. By tomorrow morning, there won't be a squirrel left in the whole neighborhood. I promise. Well, how can you be sure? Oh, it's just plain everyday witchcraft. Saul calling on the Witch of Ender couldn't be more sacrilegious. <laughs> the only way he could get in touch with the good Samuel, if I recall my scripture. <laughs> oh, blasphemy! <laughs> Sure, pray that it is. Well, you've seen the result at the Morse Orchard. Well, I wash my hands of it. I'll be right with you, love. Uh, here you are. What's that, Mr. Dobb? Yeah, yeah, my sentiments exactly. What's Mr. Dobb's opinion? 
Well, Mr. Dobbs says that if the Lord made us all in his own image, that some of us has slipped a little bit. <laughs> We're going to your house now. There wasn't no sound, she lived in the sty. Three little piggies had she. She went around going oink, 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 and the little ones went wee, wee, oh. Three little pigs, three little pigs, three little pigs had we. They all went down to the grocery shop to see. Dan? Dan, are you going to tell him? If he doesn't talk you out of it. Well, it's for his own sake. The three little pigs, they up and down, they died as a single bee. From trying to say, oink, 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 when the old say, wee, wee. A moral is this little thing, a moral that's easy to see. She waddled around, oink, 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 and the little one said, wee, wee. Pretty, huh? Well, I'd say it's a wee mite more on the philosophical side. <laughs> About to do your orchard, Pop. Want to come and watch? Oh, thank you, Ezra. Why don't you boys run along? I'd like to have a little talk with Pray. Is it all right to go along? Because these are sacred to the Cherokee. Oh, Mr. Dobb will be glad to go along with you, won't you, Mr. Dobb? Yes. Come on. Well. Well. I suppose now that you're going to tell me that, uh... You've never seen anything like this before, hmm? Well, Prater, I remember when I was living with the Indians. If the squaws used to keep the deer out of their cornfields without any fences. Hmm. Well, uh, one of nature's lovely mysteries. Conversation smelled instead of heard. Nobody's found out quite how it works yet, but every living creature, they've, they've got the hang of it. Animals and birds and fish. Us too would be my guess, except when we took up words, I think that we messed ourselves up there. But wild things, they make welcome to their friends and they warn away their enemies. Bobcat must to scare away ground squirrels. Them little varmints gets one whiff of it and they say to themselves, if that devil is a scratching at our nest, we better set sail for New America. Well, I just hope they don't push you on board their boat. By Mrs. Grace? <laughs> well, Mrs. Grace, not the only one you've offended with your fall to roll. If you just do away with the pretty part and mark the burrows with a pair of overalls, I can unoffend them like scat. <laughs> yeah, civilization comes creeping in and tolerance just doesn't keep a pace with them. Daniel, you know what just come across my mind? Committee of Correspondence Days. And you fomenting revolution up and down the land, the king's men hallooing after you, and you enjoying yourself. <laughs> now, who would ever thought that you'd turn out to be the cautious one? At the same time, I hold your opinion high, and there's just one thing I'd like to have you straighten out for me. Uh, them Indian women keeping their corn free of the deer. Now, uh, just how'd they go about that? Well, a... Uh... Prater Breezy, you're plumb sneaky. Now, who am I to say whether it was the red paint or the dancing that did it? <laughs> to say nothing of missing all the enjoyment. Ah, <laughs> uh, not to mention the boys learning respect for other people's ways and having a little of it rub off on their elders. Mm hmm. Now, there speaks the rum muscullion that I know and take pride in. With you in a minute, ladies. Just come on in, look around. In the meantime, you might find something you want. We are calling on you as the magistrate. Now, say, <clears throat> you hind us, step away from the judge's bench. Most your grandchildren are going to have to wait. Now, Mrs. Grace, what, Miss Creant, are you charging? Prater Beasley. Prater Beasley? Prater Beasley. The same Prater Beasley that just rid your homestead of a plague of squirrels? You didn't see how he did it. We did. First time, leastways. It was pure blasphemy, and it involved innocent children. You know, that's what Bingham means to say. Now, you Heinzes, just tend to your swelling. Now, Mrs. Grace, I am a little weak on law, but a bull ox on equity. Now, that's a platform I run and was elected on. Now, 
When a man has done you good and you want him locked up because you don't like the duds he done it in or who he chose to help him out, I just can't go along with you women. You mean you don't want to? Want to? I've been magistrate for three weeks, and all I've had out of it is to make Mrs. Jones a widow. Is her poor husband dead at last? He has been gone the past seven years and not a peep out of him. Oh, can't say I blame him. That woman's a terror. Mr. Hines, for shame. What happens to the farm? It's hers. <coughs> Miss Jones? Widow Jones, poor dear. In 30 days, she puts a stone up in the churchyard, and everything he had is hers. Come on, S. I ain't finished yet. Now you are. Come on. Well, that'll clear some of the air around here. Has she ordered the block for her mourning? Nope. And there's one widow I don't expect to sell her none. She's probably so overcome with grief she's forgotten the proprieties, poor thing. We'll go and call on her. You drunk up half my rum. Ah, oh, what's a gill of rum to a man on the point of becoming rich? Shh. Huh? Remember what I said the other day? Lightning is strike and we'd have fields and plagues just like everybody else? Well, it's happened. The widow Jones is a rich widow. She's gonna need a man to protect her. You gonna marry her? <laughs> <laughs> yes, when the good Lord handed out the brains in our family, he sure did pass you by. Well, any fool can see you're a born husband. Now, you listen here. Mama always now said... look, I'll be you... right beside you to advise you and help you, and we'll share just like we always had. Huh? Now, come on. We got the inside track. We don't want anyone squeezing in ahead of us. Well, come on! What do I do? You rap at the door. She opens the door and says, come in. Yeah, what if she don't? You go in anyway. Come on. Give her these. Women like them when they're getting courted. Look, as soon as you're inside, you shut the door. Then you put your arms around her like, like this and tell her that you've come to woo. Our Sunday coat's kind of tight. That's the way it's supposed to be when you're dressed up. Now go on. Where are you going to be? I'll be right here till you get inside. And I think I'll take a walk down by the barn and look over our new livestock. Well, go on. Megan, I'm right here. Don't be scared. Oh. Our Sunday coat? No. You didn't do what I told you. I did too, to a T. She just don't cotton to being rude, not by me. Now what are we gonna do? You don't remember anything, do you, ass? Well, some things I do, baby. You remember Prater Beasley witching them ground squirrels? You think he could witch her? Witchery is witchery. <laughs> that's what Mama always said. And that's what you and me is gonna do. Come on. Plon, 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 plon. 
Mothers keep you at home, boys? I guess not. Be careful there. Don't step on Mr. Dobb. Where is he? He's around the whiskey still. That's what keeps it so shiny. Mr. Dobb, why don't you just come come on? Come along with people. That's right. Come up here and get next to the fire and get warm. Well, welcome, boys. Nice to have you in my abode. What are you cooking? Uh, have a taste. That's Rush of Fay, according to the recipe of uh, Brian Savary, in case you know who he is. I don't. The Shakespeare of the cooking pot, they call him, and they call him right. He made his acquaintance when he came here all the way from France to taste American wild turkey. You know everybody, don't you? Well, between Mr. Dobb and me, yeah, it's more or less. George Washington, just to nod and ask his help. But Patrick Henry, what, they're the best of acquaintance. Uh, second best, maybe third. Hey, what's that? It's an Indian nose flute. Would you like to play it? Be careful. Don't step on Mr. Dobb. Uh, try it. No, 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 that's not the way. Uh, you, uh, it's... it's an acquired taste, unless you were Indian born, which you were not. <laughs> Here's something a little more fitting for your education. Play the one about our Polly. What's up, Mr. Dobb? Mr. Dobb says if I continue to scandalize you young and with unrespectable singing, that he may have to consume some of your elders to save my careless neck. <laughs> no, I'll sing an ancient song in honor of Mr. Dobb. But of course you deserve it. <laughs> He's modest with all. <laughs> I was born about 10,000 years ago And there's nothing in this world I do not know I saw Peter, Paul, and Moses Playing ring around the roses And Mr. Dobb will eat the man who says it isn't so I taught Solomon to say his ABC Showed Daniel Boone the road to Kentucky and while floating down the bay with George Washington one day, I happened old Methuselah to see. The good Queen Bess, she fell in love with me. She wanted to wed me secretly. But being a king was never, never the spare's desire. So I jollied her along a little while. I was born about 10,000 years ago And there's not a thing in history I don't know I saw Peter, Paul, and Moses Playing ring around the roses All right, if we join you? The more the merrier. All this stuff, magic? Well, there's a lot of magic in everything, even being alive. What'd I tell you? Something I can do for you? Well, now, maybe you can and maybe you can't. It's, uh, it's private. We're probably Beasley's helper-outers. Well, uh, the fact is, Brother S is getting himself married. To the widow Jones. No, she's not officially a widow yet, is she? Uh, close enough for getting wooed. <laughs> well, if she says so, I guess it's all right. Well, there, see, now, there you put your finger on the rub. Oh, you mean she says no? Well, she don't quite know our intentions yet in full. She throwed me out when I smooched her. <laughs> there ain't nothing funny in that. She played hob with our Sunday coat. That's why we need the hex. What? To win her farm and affections. Oh, you mean a love filter. Yeah, that's it, a potion. I'm afraid that's a little out of my line. With all this stuff and the way you magic them ground squirrels? Now listen here, Prater Beasley. I've heard you say with these two ears how Patrick Henry come to you when he was courting his Sarah. Now is that the truth or were you just lying? Well, if it wasn't for Prater Beasley, Patrick Henry would be a lorn bachelor today. Well, Lan? Well, this is not exactly Patrick Henry, you know. 
Oh, you mean because you think we're poor? <laughs> Show them, baby. Yeah. Does this look like cap in hand? Are we coming as beggars? Well, I must warn you, sometimes this stuff kicks back. Kick back? How? Oh, he's just trying to scare us off. You can't scare us, Prater Beasley. Us Heinzes are like iron. Now you just get in there and mix up that potion. Very well. Just a minute. How do I make it work? Well, three drops in her tea, and then you sit with her after she drinks it. Twenty-nine straight evenings, that is, until Mr. Jones's tombstone is ready to be put up in the churchyard. But what if she don't let me? She'll have drunk that potion, wouldn't she? She can't help herself. Is that gonna be like Patrick Henry's? Ah, uh, you're a different man. But you guarantee it'll work, huh? Well, that's... that's up to you. Slip up one evening and... and... You'd have better never started it. Now, we'll do our part, all right. You just take care of her and we'll have no troubles. Be very careful with it. Take it. Here you are. It's on the house. Oh, hey, that's real neighborly. Neighborly? If it wasn't for me, you never would be rich. Don't you remember? If the witch ain't paid, the potion ain't any good. We learned that from our mama. There you are. Come on. Now you daren't put no hex on us. Do you think that'll really work? Well, I'll tell you, Israel. If the widow Jones allows S. Hines to sit with her for 29 straight evenings in a row, <laughs> I'll be a little scared of my own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, Queen Bess, goodbye. No matter how you curse and cry, I'm on my way to Kentucky. I was born a hundred thousand years ago. And there's nothing in this world I do not know. I saw Peter, Paul, and Moses playing ring around the roses. And I'll shoot the man who says it isn't so. Put that in your pocket. You want her to see it? How do I get it into her teapot? When she ain't looking, what do I say to her this time? We'll spy on her, Tim. She ain't home. Well, how do I woo her? You sneak in and sneak the potion into her teapot. Well, what if she comes back? I'll give you a signal, and you flip out the window before she comes in the door. Now go on, I'm watching out for you. off my boots, woman. Get me a mug of cider from the cave. Yes. Is she coming? Hurry up with that potion. One, two, oh my good lord. <laughs> Got to flip out the window. I didn't even signal you. 
just in the nick of time. Or shade better. Yeah, one that could pull his weight in the traces. And I don't mind what people say about you. The farmer gets me, he's gonna get a pearl. I don't mind neither. Well, what's happened is the wall of my wells caved in. Well, I got on our Sunday coat. And if it ain't dug out tonight, my critters will go dry in the morning, leaving me a poor woman. That's terrible awful. The tools are leaning right outside. You can leave your Sunday coat in here to your dad. No, I'll have to come back for it. Wait a minute. How much do you think you're gonna get out of me? Uh, that is for a sorrowful, near-bereaved woman. Oh, it ain't money I want out of it. And what in blazes do you want? Well, I, I want to sit here and drink tea with you for the next 29 straight nights. <laughs> oh, yes. That's the cheapest well I ever got dug out. You can sit here and drink tea till you found her. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Peter Beasley, you are a devil. Wedding bells ring out. <coughs> what was that? I just said. <coughs> Dogged if I can figure you out. You want another splash? Oh, I guess. Thanks. I intend to talk to Cincinnati. What's Cincinnati got to do with it? Selling tea like this, it tastes like it never seen China. Mine tastes like it's seen China. We're drinking out of the same pot. <coughs> it's worse than I thought. <coughs> no, I was. I was, I was just deep in thought, and uh, a tea run down my Sunday throat. You was deep in what? A thought, ma'am. As sure as I sitting there, I thought, uh, the wood pile is running awful low, and you getting ready to cook a big meal with no more wood and uh, a jackrabbit. Hey, watch where you're throwing iron wood, will you? Another thing, and I'm worried. Now, what do you find to worry you? Well, look at the sweat on my brow. I done worked up a blister. Well, when the widow asks, you gotta do for the time being, anyway. That's it. She didn't ask. I just opened my mouth and offered it. You know, Brother Bingham, I think that potion's working on me at the same time. Oh, that's plain impossible. We're drinking out of the same teapot, ain't we? Did the witch lay a hex on you? Not that I know, anyhow. The wits don't lay a hex on you. The potion can't harm you. Now, you ought to know that by now. I'm still sweating like a horse. Wooing fever, we call it. Never last past wedding bells. Tonight's the night you pop her the question, and tomorrow morning, all you want to do is just sit around and rock and get waited on. <laughs> Whoa. 
Flower of the dogwood, sing to my nostrils. Black gum. What's this medicine good for? The, the ague. Hand me some of the mountain ash, the red berries. Good. Four more. This is a red light of fire. Oh, Now they'll stop being what they are and become medicine. You know, I thought about becoming a doctor. Most of that had to go to Yale College. Yale College? That's a good place, but they go a little bit too much for the book. That's how you're supposed to learn. Well, Mr. Dobbs says that you learn by living. And the more you live, the more you learn. But the way you really learn is by looking and questioning and doubting everything that man has said that is the gospel truth. No matter who he is, says Mr. Dobbs. Been expecting you. You hear that? He admits he's expecting us. About a month ago, I gave you a love filter. Just a month and you know it. Give it? Why, you old scoundrel, you sold it to us. And don't try and lie out of it in front of this child. You said Patrick Henry come to you and he's courting his Sarah. Well, you don't even know the man. Patrick Henry's his closest acquaintance. Now, how do you know that? Because Prater Beasley said... No matter who they are, as Mr. Dobbs says. Because Prater Beasley knows his favorite song. For tonight we'll marry Mary B. For tonight we'll marry Mary B. For tonight we'll marry Mary B. Tomorrow we'll be sober. Do you hear that? But Daniel Boone lets his own flesh and blood be taught. You're heading for bad trouble, boy, associating with this here witch. And that witch gonna be in bad trouble. We don't get our money back. We turn the filter and the money is yours. Well, you know we can't do that. We can't do that. I put it in the widow's tea. All of it? Three drops every night, then I sat with her. Except one time I put too much in by mistake. I sat with her for 29 straight nights. Your powers are greater than you thought. Yes, if you succeeded in doing that. But you ought to ask for her hand. She ain't got no hand. She ain't a widow anymore. Well, then you got what you paid for. Not S. That's what we've been trying to tell you. I mean, last night I put on her Sunday coat and I washed from head to toe to pop the question. And I went up and I knocked on her door, my mouth all smooched up for a kiss. And who should open the door but Jones? Mr. Jones? He couldn't. His headstone's going up in the churchyard tomorrow. Says he was prisoner to the Indian for the past seven years. Of course, she don't believe a word of it. Oh, neither do we. That woman's got a tongue like a razor. Ain't no man could stand up to that for a full life. There's nay luck about the house, it's Sister Jones Awa. There's nay luck about the house with Mr. Jones Awa. No luck when he's gone. What do you mean by that? That, as Israel puts it, my powers are greater than I thought. I compounded a filter that brought a man from the grave back to life. What's that, Mr. Dobb? Oh, Mr. Dobb. He likens me to the prophet Elijah, restoring the widow's son to life. Jones wasn't dead. Well, even if he was, it was our money. Well, why don't you collect from him? What, from Jones? Yeah, you said he reaped the benefits. Well, yeah, come to think of it, he went out. Ain't it enough, he hexed us? Don't let him twist your mind as well. Now, look here. I was a share in that fortune, and I'm holding you responsible. And Boonesboro's got a magistrate these days. And what good's that going to do us? Old Cincinnatus wouldn't even hail him up for Mrs. Grace. Ending a plague of ground squirrels is not against the law. Yeah, but cheating is. Against the law and equity as well. Hey, you hear that? He admits it. We got him. <laughs> yeah, what made him agree with us? He's got some cadoodle up his sleeve. No, he ain't. He hexed us after we paid him. Now, that's against the witch's book. That puts him in our power. 
We're gonna hail you into court. Yeah, you rue the day you frauded the Heinzes. <laughs> them the idea. Well, that's why we fought the revolution. What, so those diddlers can make you look like a criminal? No, so every man can have his day in court and disputes between Americans be settled according to the evidence. Mrs. Gray, she's going to kick up her heels into the jig when she hears about this. <laughs> Don't think they could win, do you? Well, as we're going to tell you, Mr. Dobb remembers Socrates sentenced to the hemlock. And Solon, the lawgiver, being kicked out of Athens into exile, to say nothing of some latter-day events, which would embarrass me to mention. Now, Mr. Dobbs believes that Boonesboro's first trial will be a great experiment in law and equity at the inside. Primanently. <laughs> There was an old sow, she lived in the sty, and three little piggies had she. She waddled around going oink, 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 and the profane music three three. at a time like this. Don't bite him, Mr. Dobbs, not on the first day of court. Don't worry, Mr. Hines, justice will triumph. I wish I could be sure of that, Mrs. Grace. He'll get his comeuppance. Yes. Come on, Dad! All right, this court is now open for business. Now, as uh, you no doubt remember from my campaign, I am a little weak on law. But you're a bulwark on equity. Yay! Excuse me, Sinsen. I mean, Your Honor. However, I have been studying up on the law as such, and uh, I have made a few important points. The first point being that uh, you have your choice. Now, you can be tried by me or by a jury of 12 good men and true. Mo Grady will be one. Uh, Daniel, uh, you're a legislator. What? The uh, defense has a right to choose. Yes. The defense has a right to choose, and that's as it ought to be. Hmm? Uh, your Honor. I trust your equity and your uh, fairness, so I'll be tried by you. Thank you, and I will do my level best to be fair for all concerned. Now, point number two, you all have the right to be spoke for by real lawyers, uh, even though there ain't a real lawyer this side of Lexington. Well, we don't need no lawyer to tell us. <laughs> your Honor, I'll plead my own case. Well, we can get right down to the nub. Uh, Mr. Clark? Your Honor. Thank you. Now, this is the case of Frater Bisley. He's being sued uh, for cheating and otherwise finagling. S. Hines must be what this means to say. That's Bing and Hines et al. Well, that's what it says here, but it don't fit the case. Well, it'll come out in the testimony. Oh, I dearly hope it's fit for ladies' ears. All right, Frater Beasley, I want to speak up for your side. I yield to... My, um, accusers, Your Honor. Ain't nothing else you can do. Down and being stomped by his familiars. Out of their own book. <laughs> All right. Speak up, S. And Bingen, I suppose. Why are you suing him? Well, he frauded us. Well, in what way? Well, you know in what way. You've heard all the talk around. I want to hear you talk. In mixed company? The law says open trial. The law says open trial. Well, I say the law ain't very delicate. Speak up, S. Well, well if I got to, I guess I got to. Well, uh, <clears throat> me and Bing, and we was uh, thinking about the widow Jones. Well, she was going to be a widow anyway. We got to thinking that she needed a man to protect her. To protect me? Why well, mop up the floor with men? Ask Jones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go on, S. Well, we figured, uh, since everybody else around here's already got a farm, we thought it might as well be us. The two of you? Well, that wouldn't be respectable. Oh, and then, Prater, he sold us the filter. The what? I could get Patrick Henry to get his Sarah to fall in love with him. Is that what he told you? Well, yes and no. Well, he didn't say it exactly. 
and you let him believe it. Ours was three drops in her tea, and then poor ass here had to set with her after she drunk it, night after night. I had my work cut out for me just getting her to let me stay, even though I did dig out her well. You was a nuisance. Well, he got the potion down you, didn't he? And then she wouldn't marry me. <laughs> Jones come home, he's sitting right there alongside of her. Well, that's why we want our money back, along with what I lost by her not going through at the wedding. You lost? Well, yeah, he was to share in the fortune. Oh, he was, was he? I put up the witch money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have it quiet in here. Rita Beasley, say your say. Well, Your Honor, I, I think it's uh, already been said. No argument? Well, I'd like to move for acquittal on the evidence. Well, from the point of view of evidence, I'm tempted to agree. Oh, injustice! Mrs. Grace, sit down. Now, evidence is one thing, but from the point of view of equity and justice, Rita Beasley, I am ashamed of you. You're the smartest man around here by a running mile. You read books and you think philosophy, and the young ones dote on you in spite of it. But you ain't got no more responsibility than a polecat. You play and thumble rig on the superstition of these diddlers for your private amusement. Now, just a minute about that. Jed, I take my hat off to you. I am going upstairs and wrestle with this decision till equity throws me. This court is adjourned till I get back. What's he got to wrestle on? We give him the straight facts. I thought we had the case won when he admitted we had the equity. Equity? Nah, that's just talk. That whole crowd's in cahoots. Need a miracle to win. If we had enough money left, we'd get Prater Beasley to work up one for us. Just let me think, will you? How long can it take that man to arrive at a simple fact? Well, he may not find it that simple. Mrs. Boone, you are a woman. We all should take a warning. Seven great towns in Greece, tis said, claimed Homer's birth when he was dead, through which alive he begged his bread. Oh. We could just walk out and leave him high and dry. Now, what good would that do us? Huh? Gentlemen. Do you know where I can find Dan Boone? Oh, he... Ah, uh, he lives out there someplace. Oh, and he isn't at home. I thought he might have come down to the fort. Well, I can knock on doors. Somebody may know. Here. We ain't buying nothing. Oh, they're free. I'm running for Congress. As long as they don't cost. Patrick Henry. Hey, you really him? Yes, I really am. You gonna tell him after all? We got our miracle, you oh. How do you suppose a man of Patrick Henry's prominence is gonna feel when he finds out an old loony claims he couldn't make hay with his own sweetheart without witchery? Oh, Patrick Henry's gonna be mad as hops. <laughs> you gonna be mad as hops. I am done wrestling with my decision. And I half wish I'd lost. Justice does triumph. Oh, thy will be done. Think of Just like Socrates. The great Athens. Well, not quite, son. Why don't you go there and sit down next to me? Sure. The Heinzes are not yet in court, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Court's in session. Now, let's have some order here. Hold on! What? Hold back your decision. We got ourselves a new witness. His word's better than his bond. That this here polecat frauded and diddled just like he done us. Sit down. Done for and finished, ain't you? And your in cahoots can't stop it anymore. Sit down and be decorous. Uh, your Honor, if I may, before the court proceed. 
Jan! Pat! Patrick! Becky! Oh. Who's he? Patrick Henry. Uh, what are you doing here? I'm running for Congress. I hope I can count on your support. Well, you don't need to ask. I can even make a speech for you. <laughs> well, with Daniel Boone orating for you, I guess you'd have no use for me and Mr. Dobb. Fredo Feasley, why, you old polecat. Is Mr. Dobb with you? Just one inch and you'd have stepped on him. Oh, Mr. Dobb, I am so sorry. He doesn't know his own strength anymore. Israel? Israel? I used to know you. I know. I was a lot smaller then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll remember that next time. This court is in session. I do apologize, Your Honor. An unexpected meeting with dear friends. Say, you are the old loony that's on trial here. I am that self-same old loony. Your Honor. Prater Beasley has not engaged me as his counsel, nor would I expect him to, but as a friend of court. Now, hold on. What kind of friend is that? Amicus Curie. Your Honor, may I speak? Now, go ahead. I'm as curious as anybody else. Your Honor, if not for Prater Beasley here, I'd be a lawn bachelor today. Oh. That means he didn't diddle them. Well, whatever Prater says is apt to be the truth, no matter how outrageous. I will not believe it. Oh, madam, picture me, a young fellow, head over heels in love and tongue-tied as a bashful coot. I'm sure you must remember from your own courtship. Well, Prater Beasley gave me a filter, distilled by his genius, and I quaffed a glass about so tall. Ours is for her to drink. Well, he told you the recipe's different according to the man. Don't interrupt the congressman. You testify it worked. It hit me like Jove's thunderbolt. <laughs> I uh, took another small shot, uh, just uh, for luck, and staggered down to Sarah's house. I asked, and she said yes. And by the way, you still have that still? Yes, and some of the finest branch water that ever trickled down a man's throat. <laughs> well then, Your Honor. Case dismissed, court adjourned. This tavern is open for business. Kentucky wins over Great Athens! Hey. Is that Mr. Dobb? Mm. Mr. Dobb suggests that uh, a drop of the hemlock can be salutary to the continued morals of the body politic. He hopes you're right about Kentucky, but he's not sure. Well, how about some of that branch water? If you'd like me to draft that speech for you... Wouldn't sound like Paul. Uh, do it your own way, then. Becky, my dear, as <laughs> always. Oh, and the next time you come, you bring Sarah, you hear? Will you come up and visit us in Philadelphia? The Capitol? You can watch our nation taking form. It's beautiful to see. Well, we'll see what we can do. Well, he acts like he smelled a bear. Oh, t'other day, the Yankee folks were mad about the taxes. And so we went like engines dressed to split the chest with axes. Sir, for snake bite and voters who need mellowing, compliments of Mr. Dobb. I thank you on both counts. And you thank Mr. Dobb for me, too. This is going to come in mighty handy on some of these cold nights while I'm out there campaigning for Congress. Well, I'd better get at that, too. I've got a lot of hands to shake over here at Idamax Stockade. Now, Israel, don't you let your folks leave you behind when they come up to Philadelphia. Don't worry, I won't. Bye. Bye. Right. You know, I'm thinking about being a congressman instead of a doctor. Ha, 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 ha.